This is problem 9-11.E, it's on page 515. A wide flange steel beam, a W12 by 30, carries the load shown in figure P911. If you look on the upper right hand corner of this page, you'll see it. It's a, an I-beam essentially, and you can see the way the loads are set up. I guess I'll go ahead and draw it for the sake of the video. Okay, let's see, 15K, a reaction here, a reaction there, four foot to this reaction, and then 10 more feet uh, between the other two reactions. Uh, let's see, compute the deflection at the load. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay, now, we don't really have any theory about how much this thing is going to deflect, except we know, of course, that the higher the elastic modulus is, the less it's going to deflect, right? The stiffer the material, the less it's going to deflect. Also, the, the stiffer the geometry is, the higher the area moment of inertia, the more it's going to, uh, well, the less it will deflect. So really, the product of these two will be inversely proportional to the deflection. But beyond that, we really don't know much about deflections of beams. What I've done so far is just pointed you to the back of the book where the solutions are located. So let's go to the back of the book, the book and see if we can simply find the solution. By the way, is this a statically determinate or a statically indeterminate beam? In other words, can you use statics to solve the reactions? Sure, right? In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll go to the back of the book in a minute. But let's just go ahead and let's call this one A, and let's call this one B, and we'll solve for the reactions. So how would you do that? Well, what I would do is I would some moments say about B. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we'll just do this quickly. Some should come up to zero. So we'd have uh, let's see, A is a negative moment, so negative A times 10 plus 14 times 15K. Of course, my numbers without any units here are in feet. So this should give me A as simply 14 times 15 over 10, and it'll be in thousands of pounds because that's what K stands for. Okay, so let's see, 14 15s over 10 are 21. So I think that A should be 21K, in other words, 21,000 pounds. Now I could sum forces, but I'll use the sum of forces as a check. So what I'm going to do next is sum moments about A. Should get zero. If I sum moments about A, then what would I have? Well, I'd have 4 feet times 15K, okay, minus 10 feet times however much B is. So to calculate B, all I have to do is say 4 times 15 by 10, all right? So the 4 and the 10 have what units? I didn't write them down. This is kind of a bad habit. Feet, that's right. The 4 and the 10 have units of feet. The 15 has units of thousands of pounds. So B comes out in? Thousands of pounds. Okay, Ks. Not newtons. Not kilonewtons. All right, not PSI. Force. In thousands of pounds. So four fifteens over ten are six. So I think that this should be six K. Let's see if that works. Sum of forces says that fifteen plus six should be twenty-one, and that's true. So this works. All right. So now we've taken care of the statics part. That's not really the interesting part. That's the class before this. But now we'd like to use some equation, some magic equation in the back of the book to solve for the deflection right there, okay? Because that's what they're asking. For. Well, no, wait a second. Actually, they're asking for the deflection here. I didn't think through that very well. They said at the load, and they put lines through these two indicating that they're reactions. So let's go back and see uh, if we can find a situation that would look like this. I found one. Let's see if you can find it also. One I, one I found is on page 735. Which one did you suggest? Did we even have to find the support for the equation? Did we have to find them? I don't know. Do I want you to find them in every problem? Yes. Good question, though. Everyone select one. 
You all agree that it's G? G. Good. Okay. So G is the one I want to use on page 735. Why could I, by the way, before we do that, why couldn't I use A? Doesn't A look like the same thing? I mean, A looks like this. Uh, better yet, not A, how about B? Because B is the one with an offset load. I mean, isn't that the same thing, just upside down? They're not the same. What's different? The reactions aren't the same. What's special about the reactions? Why does that matter? They don't. We don't deflect at the reactions, that's the key. We cannot allow the beam. One thing that's fundamentally different about the, beam, the reactions is that we assume that's a ground point. That's a point where the beam does not deflect. So notice, we'd have deflection here, which would mean deflection here, but that's not okay. So we have to go for G instead. That's why we can't use B. Alright, so let's do it. Uh, at the end of the overhang, the deflection y sub c is equal to negative p a squared divided by 3 e i times l plus a. All right, so shouldn't be too bad. All we have to do is plug in numbers. Well, let's see. Negative p, what is p? Well, p is this load. It's this 15 kip. Okay, what is A? I'll have to look back at the diagram. A is the distance between the last reaction and the applied load. So you're right, that must be 4 bless you, squared over 3EI. Well, what are E and I? Well, there's the E is a material property, right? And I will be based on this. Good. So let's go look it up. Uh, let's see. Now, of course, we're using steel. They didn't give us an alloy of steel or tell us it was structural steel or anything. So we can't really say much more than that E is 30 times 10 to the 6 pounds force per square inch. So that's E. But what about I? Let's see. W shapes. Let's see. To go back in the appendix to the W shapes. And that's page 700. So W12 by 30 is rho n. Does everyone see that on page 700? Okay, so rho n, if we go over to the moment of inertia, it's 238 inches to the fourth. So let's see, 238 inches to the fourth, so that's what we'll plug in here. And then L, what is L? Well, L is the length of the beam. In fact, L is always the length. You have to be careful with it, though, because sometimes, look at uh, B on page 734. B on page 734 looks like this, and there the length of the beam is the length between the supports. This section that hangs out over the edge is not stressed, and so it's not considered to be part of the length of the beam. Okay? nothing really interesting out there. If you know the deflection angle at the last support on the right, you can figure out how far up D is going to go. Okay. Anyway, so let's go back to our problem. We need the length of the beam. In our case, the length of the beam is the total length, and that is, uh, no it's not. Not for this equation. This one's different. It is just the length between the supports, so that's 10 feet. Notice, though, that they add A on, and A is this distance, so plus 4 feet. So we essentially end up with the entire length of it. Okay, so now let's plug this into our calculators and see what we get. Can we plug everything in? Can we just plug in numbers and write it down? Don't you have a unit miss? We have a unit problem, don't we? We've got feet up here, and we've got inches down here. Okay, well, that's not too bad. What do we want? We want deflection. Do you want deflection in inches or feet? I don't care inches. I think I like inches. That makes sense because it's probably not going to be a huge deflection. And then I should have a good feel for it because I have a good feel for thousands of an inch, or at least I think I do. So let's see. We've got feet cubed in the numerator. How many cubic inches are there in a cubic foot? I don't know either off the top of my head. Let's do it the easy way. Watch this. 12 inches per one foot quantity cubed takes care of the problem. 
Okay, I don't really recommend that you re memorize things like 144 square inches per square foot. You can. Obviously, I have it memorized. You probably don't have this one memorized. Even if you did, it's easiest to do it this way, and that way you make sure you don't make any mistakes. Okay? Because and the only thing you really have to understand is that this cube will work on the units just like it works on the numbers. Okay? So, 15 times 16 times 14 times 12 cubed to take the whole numerator all at once. Divided by 3, divided by 30, e6, divided by 238. And I get 2.71 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's see, did everything work out? Do we still have a problem? Anybody see the problem we still have? Let me cheat and move this over since I'm off the video. We have thousands of pounds here and just pounds here, right? There's 1,000 pounds force for every thousand pounds. Now the pounds go away, so this result I've got here has to be multiplied by a thousand. Another way of writing this is 0 0.0271 inches. Okay? Did I do that right or is it 0.2? No, it's just 0.2. There. With the 10 to the negative 1 just says move the decimal place over once. So a little over a quarter of an inch of deflection, yes. Why did you cube it? Why did I cube it? Because I've got feet squared, feet cubed here, right, <coughs> together. So I had to cube that to get rid of all the cubic feet. Good question. Any others? Did they ask for anything else? I think that was it, wasn't it? Reflection? Maybe they did ask for something else. Let's find out. Reflection at the load. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, problem 12 and 13 continue with this. So I was going to just leave the video going and then modify the problem instead. Okay, so now we'll go on to problem 12b. For the beam in the, the previous problem, complete, compute the deflection at the load if the left support is moved two feet toward the load. So what happens? When instead of this being 4 feet, we move this over 2, so that's 2 and now this is 12. What changes? Well, obviously the reactions are going to change, right? So we've got to go through all of that again. But that shouldn't be too bad. Let's see. There's still 14 feet. If we're summing moments about B, which was here, there's still 14 feet out to the 15K load. Now there are 12 feet out to the reaction at A. So we have to divide by 12. So let's see what we get here. 14 15s over 12 is 17 and a half. So 17.5. Okay. Uh, let's see. And summing moments about A, well, then we'd have 2 feet over to the 15K load. We'd have 12 feet to the reaction at B. And so what we should have here is 30, or 2 times 15, over 12. So what do we get there? 30 over 12 is 2 and a half. So now we have 2 and a half K up here. And oh, I've already changed the sub 2 and a half K. Does that work? Yeah, that sums to zero, so that's okay. Uh, now, what does that change over here? P is still the same. That changes A and changes L. So let's see. We'll still need the same conversion factors. L plus A will be 12 plus 2, but of course that's still a sum uh, result of 14. But now A is 2 squared instead of 4 squared. Let's see. Anything else that changes? No, that's it. So basically what I can do is take this result divide out the 4 squared and multiply in the 2 squared. So in other words, divide the result by, well here, I won't do it that fast. Uh, let's see, let's just plug it in. 
thousand times fifteen. Oh, by the way, this should be a negative. I dropped the negative sign. In other words, the deflection is down, not up. But that's expected because the load's acting downward. Uh, anyway, plugging all this in, let's see, 15 times 4, just going all the way across the numerator, times 14 times 12 cubed, should take care of all the numerator, divided by 3, divided by 30 e6, and divided by 238. We should get, let's see, instead of that, now I get 0 0.068 or so inches. By the way, I could have gotten the same result by simply multiplying this by 2 squared divided by 4 squared, okay, which is the same thing as, what, 4 over 16? So basically dividing that by 4. So let's try 0 0.271 divided by 4. Yeah, I still get this result. Okay. Is that too quick? Questions, comments? You okay? All right. Well, let's go on. Problem 13E. For the beam in problem 911, compute the maximum upward deflection and determine its location. Well, since we're back to problem 911, well, now we're back to whatever we had before, which I wish I hadn't erased. This was 21 and this was 6, wasn't it? Okay, so now this analysis is no longer really valid, so let's get rid of it. So this is 13E now. And so now we're trying to calculate the deflection that's the uh, maximum upward deflection. We'd like to know where it's at. So we'll go back to page 735 and uh, figure G. And we will figure out the maximum deflection and determine its location. All right. At D, the maximum upward deflection is 06415 PAL squared over EI. So let's see what that means. 06415. P is the load, it's 15K. A is back to 4 feet now, and L is back to 10 feet. So A is, let's see, 4 feet, L is 10 feet, and we have to square it. Okay, divided by E, 30 E6 PSI. You guys familiar with that shorthand for scientific notation? Instead of writing times 10, you just write E. This is not the E button on your calculator. It's not the number 2.7, yada, yada, okay, this is 10 to the, whatever. So anyway, I then is 238 inches to the fourth. Of course, we have to be careful. PSI is still pounds force per square inch, so we still need conversion factors of a thousand pound force per <coughs> K, and we also need the conversion factor, and I'm off the video camera, I apologize for that, of 12 inches per one foot taken three times. Okay. So that should take care of all the cubic feet and should take care of the pounds force and thousands of pounds. And what are we left with? Let's see, looks like we're left with inches. Yeah, so that's good. Let's find out the number. Let's see, I'll just take the numerator all the way across. 0 0.06415 times 15 times 4 times 100 times 1,000 times 12 cubed divided by 30e6 divided by 238 and that's everything so equals 0932 approximately inches I rounded up because the next number was 1.5. Okay. So that would be the maximum deflection. Now where is it located? Well let's see according to the figure here it's at 0.577 times L. 0.577 times L. L is this 10 foot distance. And so, what symbol did they use? They didn't give it a symbol. I would give it the symbol X sub so D would be 5.77 feet. But notice that's measured from here. So the maximum deflection is over here somewhere. Of course, the beam looks something well. Try that again. 
they look something like that. And really this is going to bend also, so it should be curved. Not a very good artist. You see why I'm an engineer and not an artist now? Anyway. So this distance is x and d. We could measure from the other end if we wanted to, but there it is. Questions? Comments? All right. Yeah, go ahead. Are we going to need to know the height of the deflection? That's this. Okay. Good question. Yeah, I understand. Uh, you could get the deflection anywhere on the beam if you wanted it. Uh, let's see. Could you? No, they didn't give us an equation for it. They just <coughs> gave us the deflection at the overhang and the maximum deflection. They did not give us an equation like the rest of them, or like most of them, for calculating the uh, deflection at any point. So. Good question. Anything else? 